Shalom Chaverim. In just a couple of days we'll be celebrating uh, Passover and it will be inaugurated with the pu two beautiful seders that we will be, sedarim, that we will be having. We will be surrounded by family and friends and telling the story of how God took us out of, out of Egypt. We will be doing the commandments of eating the matzah and the marah and drinking the wine. And all in all we will truly uh, participate in a joyous holiday, a festival of liberation. Well, if this is true by all of us, it is certainly true by the great tzaddikim, the righteous ones, the saintly ones, the Kabbalistic the ones, those that, are under, that truly understand the significance of every aspect. And indeed, one of the great Hasidic leaders, some say it happened with the Ohev Yisrael, uh, had this beautiful seder prepared. And before he started his seder, students came to observe him. And the Rebbe looked at the, at the students and in, a, in an innocent voice said, what, what, why are you here? And they said, Rebbe, we know how to do the Seder, but no one does the Seder like you. And we want to learn from you because we know that every, every item, every gesture that you do is, is laden with significance. And the Rebbe said, you want to see a beautiful Seder? I'll tell you where you should go. Go to the edge of town there lives Shapsi the bookbinder. From him, you will truly see how to celebrate a beautiful Seder. They were surprised. Shapsi the bookbinder? Who's Shapsi the bookbinder? They knew many rabbis of the city, and they knew some of the great students of the Rebbe. Shapsi the bookbinder? But of course, the Rebbe says, that's where they'll see something beautiful. They all respectfully leave, and they start walking. One of them finds out where Shapsi the bookbinder lives. It's really in one of the poorer areas of the village. Well, they walked and they walked, and from every house they could see the candles lit, they could hear the singing of the Haggadah, of the Kiddush. When they came to Shapsi's house, there was no light in the window, there was no singing. And for a moment they thought they had made a mistake, but they checked the house, it was Shapsi's house, but they couldn't hear anything of the Seder. Where is the Seder? Well, as they came a bit closer, they noticed that, that the door was partially opened. And the one of them says, well, it's open. Why don't we just go in? The Rebbe said, we can see the Seder. And the other one said, do you see a Seder? Maybe we're not even worthy of entering. And as they're standing there perplexed, they suddenly hear Shapsi talking. And they hear the voice, Shapsi is saying, Rachel, Rachel, please, I'm so sorry. I apologize. It's all my fault. I know it's my fault. I'm really, really sorry. Please forgive me. And Rachel, they can't hear what she's saying, but they hear some of her psalms. And again, Shapsi says, please, Rachel, forgive me. Please, Rachel, I won't do it again. It's, after all, it's it's a holiday. It's Yantar. Come outside. Let's celebrate the holiday together. Please, I, I'm really sorry that I did this. Well, this was now getting into a private conversation. They didn't, weren't sure that they should actually be listening, and they immediately left. They went back to the Rebbe. They had a beautiful Seder with the Rebbe, but they did not understand. What did the Rebbe mean? If you want to see a beautiful Seder, go to Shapsi the Bookbinder. Shapsi the Bookbinder wasn't having a Seder. He was seemed to be having some type of a domestic disagreement. At the end of the Seder, one of the Hasidim uh, mustered up enough courage to go to the Rebbe and say, Rebbe, what did you mean when you said that we would see the most beautiful Seder by Shapsi? There was no Seder. The Rebbe looked at him intently and he said, you know what? Go to Shul tomorrow. When you meet Shapsi, ask him. If you will be privileged, you will find out the secret of his beautiful Seder. Well, the student laughed and he was convinced that Either he didn't see or hear what he thinks he saw or heard in Shapsi's house, or alternatively, maybe Shapsi is one of the hidden saints. The next day after Shul, he and a fellow Chassid goes over to Shapsi, who's walking home, and they said, you know, Chassameach, the giant of Shapsi, can we have a moment? Yes, what is it? He said, you know, yesterday we happened to be passing your house, and uh, we actually wanted to go into the house, but we seemed to come in a very awkward moment. We heard you talking to your wife and you were apologizing about something that you had done. 
and please we know it's private and, and maybe we should not intrude and if you if you want us to, to leave we will but the Rebbe sent us so obviously there's something that was supposed to be learning from you can you share with us what happened and Shabsi looked at them and he said well if the Rebbe sent you then I, I will tell you he said this is what happened he says my wife is such a wonderful Ashes Chayel a true woman of valor and she put a heart and soul into preparing the house for Passover I did the best I could. I, I do my work, and then whenever I had a spare moment, I would help my wife. On Erev Pesach, the day, the, the day before the Seder, my wife was doing the finishing touches and being bustling around in the, ki- in the kitchen, and essentially I was sort of in the way. And I said, is there anything that I could do? And she says, you know what, Shopsy? I'll take care of it. I'm fine. Why don't you go to Shul and say some Tehillim? And he said, but Rachel, you're very tired. I can help you. Go, Shapsi, go. You'll be more of help if you leave the house than if you stay here. So I left. My wife had prepared a beautiful table with with wine and with matzah and with murrah and with a nice setting. And we don't always have a tablecloth. And she actually took out a beautiful tablecloth in honor of the holiday. And as she was doing the sweeping of the room, something very strange happened. The, the tablecloth was had it was quite large, quite long. It was on the floor, and as she was sweeping, the tablecloth became uh, in, in connected with 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 the broom. And as she was sweeping the floor, she was sweeping the tablecloth with it without her realizing it. And as she went further and further, suddenly she realized that the whole tablecloth was 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 slipping off the table and off went the bottle of wine and the beautiful matzah and everything that she had worked so hard for and my poor wife who was completely exhausted from all of the preparations just was overwhelmed she says Hashem this 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 is what you do you don't want me to do this either fine I won't and for good measure she stepped on whatever was there and she the house looked destroyed and she went into her room And then she began to cry because all of our hard work was ruined and the beautiful Seder table was not there. And I I knew nothing about this. When I came home and I opened up the door, I was shocked. The table was was on the side, things were on the floor. I ran into the bedroom to find out where's Rachel, is everything okay? And as soon as I come in, I stop. She's on the bed, she's crying. And I gently, I ask, Rachel, is everything okay? She shouts, no, everything is not okay. Because of you, I am exhausted. Because of you, the table is on the floor. Because of you not staying home to help me, that's why this whole thing happened. And it took me a couple of seconds to to process. And I say, what happened? What happened is that you left too early for Teshul. And everything came tumbling down. I just couldn't do it. And she begins to cry. And I then realized that something by mistake must have happened. And she was blaming me. My first instinctive reaction was, what are you blaming me for? You told me to leave. Why are you blaming me? You were clumsy. And even if something happened, is that a reason why we can't fix it up? But I realized how deeply wounded my wife was. And I said to myself, take the blame. Do what's right. She's, a, a, she's your wife and she's in distress. Hashem will wait for the Seder. And I began to apologize. Please, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I know it's, I should have stayed. You're 100% right. And this went on for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Until finally, she looks at me and she says, you forgive me? I said, how can I forgive you? It's all my fault. There's nothing to forgive. Please, Rachel, forgive me for not staying here. But after all, it's Pesach by night. Come, let's see if we could just do a little Seder together. And that's how we finished the Seder. Sitting together by a table, not beautiful at all. There wasn't that much holiday spirit, but there was a, a warmth between us. They were very touched by the story, but they couldn't understand why the Rebbe had sent them. When they went back to the Rebbe to ask, Rebbe, why did you send us? The Rebbe told them wisely. We celebrate freedom from slavery. We celebrate freedom from limitation. 
I wanted you to understand that it's not all mystical. It's not that this corresponds to that and this gematria numerical equivalent is the remember, God did take us out of physical slavery. And every year when it comes Passover, Pesach, he gives us the strength to leave our own personal slavery. If someone gets angry, we could go beyond that. If someone is, is a jealous person, you could go beyond it. If someone is impulsive, or a person is, is timid, you could go beyond it. You could leave that slavery. You could leave that restriction. And I don't believe, it, said the Rebbe, that there was anyone in this town that truly practiced the lesson of, 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 of Passover, of Pesach, as much as Shapsi. Did not fight, did not rationalize, but instead took, said, it's my fault, I'm sorry, please let's try. Well, my friends, this is a beautiful story and it's a major lesson of Pesach. I hope and pray that this wonderful holiday that we're celebrating, Zaman Chayrasein, of the time of freedom, spiritual freedom, will also be sp freedom from worry, freedom from anxiety. Most of all, freedom from being in the bondage of Galut, to think holy, to live holy, and to be holy. Chag Sameach and a wonderful uh, holiday to all of you.